Greetings everyone, and welcome back to an in-depth look at another mini PC on the channel. I've already looked at two on the channel, one being from B-Link and the other being from Geekom. And both of those PCs, I actually did have some quite serious issues. The B-Link didn't have a screw on the heatsink, and the Geekom used terrible thermal paste on their i9 PC, which while both of those problems were easy to fix, for a consumer that's not looking too good. And with that being said, Geekom has contacted me again and asked me to review their Geekom AX8 Pro, which I honestly, I'm quite excited to test because their last one was Intel based, whereas this one's AMD based. So I'm hoping to get a lot more performance than I did with the i9 PC. So massive thank you to Geekom for sending me this mini PC for review. I really do appreciate it. And if you're interested in taking a look at this, I'll leave the link in the description for you. If you want to check it out, it's not an affiliate link, so I won't earn anything if you go there. It's just there if you want to quickly check it out while I ramble on during this review. And I also want to say I've not been paid by Geekom to review this PC. They've just sent it out for me to give my honest opinion on, and that's what I'm here to do. And also before I continue on, timestamps are in the description, as well as the pinned comments so you can skip along to wherever you'd like to be in this video as I'll be running benchmarks, doing some gaming and all that sort of stuff. So if that's all you want to see, then you can jump straight along to there if you want to. All right, so here is the Geekom AX8 Pro, which for the configuration I received being the Ryzen 9, 32 gigs of RAM and two terabyte SSD, you are looking at 899 US dollars, which I'll display Smalls' jank currency conversion chart on screen to give you a rough idea on how much this costs around the world. And at 899 US dollars, it is pricey, but the hardware in it is almost top tier Ryzen stuff, even though there's already new Ryzen processors out already, I'm still expecting great performance from what's in here. And you can also opt for the Ryzen 7 with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for 749 US dollars, which has the same GPU as the Ryzen 9. So you'd get fairly close performance between the two. So you can save a bit of money going for this option, but if you want the top spec config, then you'd have to go for the Ryzen 9. Jumping back to the Geekom RT13 mini PC that I reviewed a while back. If we go into Geekom's official Australian website, we won't find the AX8 Pro. So I don't know if there'll be a proper Australian release, but checking the IT13 in the same configuration I reviewed, you're looking at 1,300 Australian dollars for an Intel Core i9, 32 gigs of DDR4, and a two terabyte SSD. From my review of the PC, the performance just wasn't there comparing with the B-Link since the Ryzen's integrated GPU outperformed the RS graphics on the Intel. So straight away for the AX8 at 899 USD or roughly 1,371 Australian dollars, I'd immediately go with the AX8 Pro due to the Ryzen 9 and DDR5. Even though there are discount codes available to get the IT13 cheaper, I'd still recommend Ryzen over Intel if you want to do more intensive tasks with the integrated GPU. So I will be comparing the performance of the AX8 Pro with the IT13 during this video to see how close it does get in terms of performance and benchmarks. And I'll also compare the AX8 Pro with the B-Link Sur 6 Max to see how much of a jump the performance is with a newer generation Ryzen processor. Now there's not too much that I want to go into for the advertising apart from the fact that AI is kind of written all over the place, which I'm honestly not a big fan of all tech having AI just thrown into it now, but that's actually a part of the Ryzen processor. So I won't be testing any of the AI stuff on this PC. I'll just be doing what I did with the previous PCs, just running benchmarks, doing gaming and all that stuff. Geekom is also advertising their Ice Blast cooling system, which I really want to see how that helps with thermals because of the issues I faced with the previous PC. And even though I've got pictures of it on the website, I want to take a better look at it during the teardown. Also power consumption is here, which for the process of being only 45 watts, it's going to offer great performance while also not sucking up a whole bunch of power at the same time. Which, speaking of power, I want to go over the full specifications of the AX8 Pro so you know exactly what you're getting for the money. Of course, the processor is an AMD Ryzen 9 8945 HS, which is an 8-core processor with a frequency of 4 gigahertz and a turbo frequency of 5.2 gigahertz. It's got 16 meg of L3 cache. The TDP is 45 watt, as I just mentioned before, and is based on a 4 nanometer manufacturing process by TSMC. The GPU we have in this is the integrated Radeon 780M graphics, which I've tested the 680M on the B-Link Sur 6 Max, and I was very surprised by the performance of that integrated GPU, so I'm definitely interested to see how this performs. RAM, we have 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600 mega transfers per second or 2800 megahertz, which can be further upgraded to 64 gigabytes later down the track if you want to. The SSD in this is a two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 M.2 drive and can be upgraded to a four terabyte one later down the track, but there is no additional M.2 slot inside this PC for additional storage, which is unfortunate. On the back of the PC, we have one USB 3.2 type A port, one USB 2.0 type A port, one USB 4.0 type C port, one USB 3.2 type C port, dual HDMI and a 2.5 gigabit port. And on on the front we have two USB 3.2 Type A ports and a headphone jack. Would have liked to see Type C on the front, so if you do want to use Type C, you'll have to use the back for Type C connectivity. We also have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and Windows 11 is already pre-installed on this. And the dimensions of this are 117 by 111 by 38.5 millimeters. Which, being a mini PC, it's a small little guy with a small footprint, which helps if you want to attach it to the back of a monitor 
via the visa mount or if you want to take it out and about with you if you're traveling around. All right, so that's the specs and the pricing of the Geekom AX8 Pro. So let me go ahead and unbox this and we'll take a look at it, which the box isn't going to fit in frame properly, but it says Geekom on the front and the color is icy blue as well, which for me, blue means Intel, red means Ryzen, but that's just me. Otherwise around the box, it just has Geekom AX series. And we have a little sticker saying we have the AX8 Pro with the Ryzen 9, 32 gig and the two terabyte SSD. All right, so open the top, we have the mini PC. Let me also have some little cards inside of here. I'd say the instructions are there as well, which they are, so quick start guide. The unboxing experience is kind of cool because down here you've got this little drawer, which has the charger and stuff in it. That's kind of cute, which we've got an HDMI cable included. And then in here should be the power. It is a 19 volt, 120 watt power adapter. They have included a European power lead in this. So if you do purchase this, depending on what country you're from, they'll send the right power adapter for you. They told me they were gonna send me a European one, but I'm gonna be using my own power lead. So that's not a problem. Also included uh, a couple of screws for the base amount. And speaking of base amount, there it is there. Well, here is the mini PC. Right there, we have plastic on the top and the bottom, but we also have an aluminium frame going around the device. Ports wise, I have already been over, but we do have the two USB 3.2 type A ports, one with power delivery as well, the headphone jack, power button, which has a little LED built into it. Plenty of ventilation going around this, which is all good. The bottom ventilation is just for decoration. So the main ventilation is just on the back, and the sides. And then at the back, we do have all of our ports there, which as I said, I've already been over. Before we go ahead and power on the PC, I'm actually gonna do the teardown. But at this point in time, I've already tested it. I've run benchmarks and everything, but I won't spoil anything now. What I want to do though, is open this up, show you all the innards and reapply the thermal paste on the processor. And I'll run the benchmarks again, just to see if there's any difference. But at this point in time, there's no concerns. So I'm just gonna quickly take this apart. Once you've taken out the four screws, the bottom just pops off. Like so, revealing some interesting stuff. So we actually have a copper heatsink attached to the back of the metal housing. And this is actually to keep the SSD cooled inside of this, which is actually an Acer gaming SSD, I guess. It looks a little something like that, but you can see there's another thermal pad for a second SSD, but unfortunately we don't have an extra slot for additional storage. So you are stuck with just the two terabytes, which should be plenty. But with the Geekom RT13, there was a space for a 2.5 inch hard drive or another NVMe drive. Bit unfortunate we didn't get that second slot, but it is what it is. Another thing to note as well is that there is a SD card slot just here. Now I've put a card in and it sticks out quite a bit. So it's not meant for more internal storage, but I will try to see if it does read an SD card in Windows and I'll update you later on to see if it does. So we have our two RAM sticks, which are both crucial modules running at 5,600 mega transfers per second. Grab out the SSD, which is just this <laughs> cool looking Acer one. Oh, here we go, we've got some info. It's an N7000CN two terabyte. Well, it's fast, I can tell you that. You'll see the benchmark soon. At this point, we have two screws holding down the motherboard and just carefully lifting out the board. There is the massive fan on there. And we've got the aluminum housing and a metal mid frame inside of there. But this fan is called an overclock, which unfortunately there isn't any overclocking options on this. Disconnecting the fan and taking off the three screws for the fan, which just lifts off like so. You can see that there's two heat pipes running over the processor, as well as the rest of the heatsink that just goes there, where the fan blows air through. So let's check out the thermal paste on this and see what the factory applied stuff looks like. Well, that's what that looks like. The heat pipes are cool, I'll tell you that, but the thermal paste just doesn't look properly applied. That just seems like too little. Same issue that was sort of on the IT13. So I'm gonna clean this off, reapply the thermal paste, and I'll be interested to see if this does help thermals. New thermal paste on there. So go ahead and slap that back down in place. All right, well, it's back together. Well, the good thing is it's super easy to take apart if you wanna replace the SSD or the RAM. If you wanna upgrade the RAM to 64 gigabytes, later down the track, you absolutely can. But yeah, it just would have been really good to see an additional slot there. Even though it would have been a slightly smaller sized SSD that you can put in there, it just would have been good to have the option. All right, well, now that the teardown's done, now I can go ahead and set this up and show you what this thing can do. Sorry for the jank footage here, but I couldn't capture the bios menu with my capture card. So I'm just pointing my camera at the monitor and I think you get the point of what's going on here, but we have a very bare bones bios menu with just the usual options for changing the boot order. 
So exiting out of here and letting the PC boot up, we have to set up Windows 11 Pro, which is fairly straightforward. And I did have to update the system before I could actually use it. So I'll let that do its thing. That took about 20 minutes or so. Also boot times were averaging around 20 seconds from power button press to the desktop, which is honestly quite snappy. With Windows 11 booted up, I went ahead and customized a few things to my liking and going into PC settings shows our Ryzen 9 processor and 32 gigs of RAM. And we also have Windows 11 Pro on this. Now jumping into device manager and checking in here is all good. All drivers are installed. So I've got no concerns here. Installing CPU-Z and taking a look at the processor details, which I've already been over, as well as the RAM and other info in here. Checking GPU-Z just to take a look at the details of the integrated GPU. It's honestly fairly impressive for being integrated graphics. So once again, no concern here. Running AS SSD benchmark resulted in 4,997 megabyte read and 3,375 megabytes write speed, which are definitely some decent enough speeds for this SSD. Comparing with the IT13 SSD that was also two terabytes, that got a read speed of 3,795 megabytes and the write speed was 3,676 megabytes. So we have better read speeds on the AX8 Pro, but better write speeds on the IT13. This SSD also beats the 500 gigabyte one that was in the B-Link. Installing core temp just to keep an eye on temperatures. Just on idle, I was averaging around 50 degrees Celsius, which isn't too bad at the moment. I installed hardware info just to see if there was anything else I had to check out and all looked good here. Before I went ahead and ran benchmarks, I did check Windows Update to see if I had the latest version of Windows 11, as well as all drivers being up to date and everything was all good. So jumping to the main benchmarks, starting with Cinebench, R23. I'm running the multi-core benchmark. I immediately seen the processor jump up to 92 degrees Celsius, but it didn't go any further than that, which I'm quite happy with. At first, I thought the temperatures were a bit high, but considering I was benchmarking with all cores at 100% utilization, it's honestly about right for that. And as you've seen in the teardown, I did reapply thermal paste to see if that made a difference, but running Cinebench again with the new thermal paste was exactly the same. So the cooling in this is doing its job, even though the fan is a bit noisy, which you'll hear soon, but that fan does ramp up at about the 80 degrees Celsius mark, and that's when it's quite audible. But the multi-core score we got on the AX8 Pro was 14,982 with the Ryzen 9 8945HS, which comparing to the i9 13900H in the IT13, that got 11,302 for multi. So the Ryzen 9 is the clear winner here. Even the B-Link had a multi-core score of 13,425 with the Ryzen 7 7735HS. With these numbers, I'll stick with what I said earlier with the Ryzen outperforming the Intel i9, but these are just numbers at the end of the day, and all of these processors will of course handle browsing, media playback, office apps, and more, but I'm just seeing what gets the best performance at the end of the day. Single core was 1,787 on the AX8 Pro, which comparing back to the IT13, that got 1,695, so fairly close single core wise. And then with the B-Link, that got 1,554. So I can see a jump from the previous gen Ryzen to this gen Ryzen. And it also gives me an idea of where it sits compared to the i9. I also decided to run Cinebench 2024 on this as well, just out of curiosity. And I got 933 for multi and 106 for single. And since I haven't tested Cinebench 2024 on any other PC, I can't really compare it to anything else. However, if I do look up some other scores, it seems to get the same performance as a Core i5-13500H in multi, which is a bit odd. And then for single, it's almost the same as an Intel Core i7-13700HX, which is also strange. I'm just not really up to date with newer hardware like this. So I'm just going off what I see, but these really are just numbers at the end of the day. And I think it'd be better to try gaming at various resolutions to see the results from that. And that'll give us a good idea on the performance of this PC. Just before gaming, I decided to try the 4K Jellyfish video at 400 megabits per second, and it ran absolutely no problems at all. And that goes the same with YouTube and just also general performance. This PC is super speedy and does everything it needs to do, so no concerns here. So let's move on to gaming. Starting off with Cyberpunk 2077. At this point, I've switched from a capture card to OBS, so performance may be slightly impacted as I was recording this with a bit rate of 20 megabits per second. I was playing around with various resolutions and settings to see how I go, but this was at 1080p with mostly medium settings. And I was getting around an average of 30 FPS, which honestly isn't too bad at all, especially for integrated graphics. It looks great and it's definitely playable. And the processor was running around 78 degrees Celsius most of the time, which I'm fairly happy with. Next up is 720p with all medium settings, and I was getting around 42 FPS, which once again is honestly fairly good. I also did play around with having the AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution on at times, and I got various results with having that on, but most of the time I had it switched off. What's up, huh? 
Here's the game still running at 720p, but I changed some settings to low and I got a bit more FPS this time around. Once again, the game still looks fantastic even on lower settings. Now 720p at all high settings with the fidelity FX super res off. And this is what it looks like. And I was getting an average of about 35 FPS and it's looking really good at this point in time. With this Radeon 780M GPU, 720p gaming is mostly the way to go, but you can play things on 1080p, but just expect to play around with the settings and have some things on low. This is everything pretty much on low at 720p, and I was seeing almost a solid 60 FPS. Fair enough, you can see a difference in video quality, but once again, it's still looking quite nice for what it is. Still on 720p, but this time mostly everything is on ultra and I got around 30 FPS average and it's still very much playable on these settings. Bumping it back up to 1080p and everything on ultra, it looks a little something like this and I was getting an average of 17 frames per second. And it's now fairly choppy as to be expected, but you know, I was still able to play it. Finally, 1080p Ultra with Fidelity FX Super Res on runs like this, which I was getting around 33 frames a second. And while there's a noticeable drop in the graphics quality, it's still very much playable, but it is better if you drop it to 720p and have it at a mix of medium and high settings for some pretty great gameplay. Compared to what I've seen on the IT13 with the i9, it's a massive difference. Bit more performance from the AX8 Pro than the B-Link, but all up though, I'm pretty satisfied with the performance so far. So let's move on to Doom Eternal and see how that runs. At 1080p with mostly medium settings, I got some pretty decent frame rates averaging around 65 FPS. The game looks great and I was able to play it quite comfortably at these settings. Still at 1080p and everything on high and I'm now getting around an average of 55 frames per second. Some dips here and there but altogether still playable and this is everything at high so that's really cool to see. Now down to 720p for everything at Ultra Nightmare, it looks a little something like this. And I was honestly quite amazed seeing it run so smooth, averaging around 85 frames per second. And I gotta say, I haven't played Doom Eternal in a long while, so don't mind my fairly crappy gameplay, but it's looking good. With 720p and Ultra Nightmare, it is doing really good for what it is. All right, moving on to the last game, which is GTA 5, and this is 1080p with mostly all settings on high. And for a game that's now 11 years old, it still looks and runs great with an average FPS of about 50. Once again, some frame dips here and there, but it's completely playable. I did bump up everything to the max and it was running at about 17 frames per second, which obviously didn't run the best, but I thought it was worth a shot to see what it's like. But yeah, that's the gaming test with the Geekom AX8 Pro. That Ryzen 9 is definitely packing some punch, so I'm honestly really happy with how it performs. And I've thought of other things to try on this PC, but I can reassure everyone that this will be fine for almost anything you want to run on this. Granted, it's not a full-on gaming PC, but it can definitely game, and it won't replace your desktop tower with an RTX 3090 in it, but this little PC is great to save space, but still have pretty good performance. So I think with that, I've done everything I needed to do on this. I'm not good with mini PC reviews, as I really don't know what else to show you all, and I'm not really up to date with the newest computer tech, so I guess we'll just jump to a conclusion and talk about if the Geekom AX8 Pro is worth it or not. back here. I'm trying to think of anything else to demonstrate with this PC, but I just honestly can't think of anything else apart from doing a 4K render. But since I'm using a super outdated version of Vegas, it's probably not going to be very accurate. So I do hope that an SSD benchmark, Cinebench and gaming was more than enough, but I guess it's better to just jump into a conclusion about the AX8 Pro so we can finish this video off. But first, I just want to splice in the fan noise with how it sounds idling and then at 100% usage.
And as you just heard, it's definitely audible at 100%, but on idle, you can barely hear the fan unless you stick your ear right up to this. So the cooling in this is definitely doing its job. So no problems there. All right, so with the conclusion of the AX8 Pro, I'll try and explain everything as best as I can from here. So from the Geekom IT13 to this, I'm so much happier with this mini PC from Geekom. The IT13 was just such a letdown, but the AX8 Pro combined with the Ryzen 9 is just an awesome little powerhouse for the size of this PC. Given that the IT13 with the i9 is pretty much the the same price as this, the AX8 Pro is a clear winner if I had to pick over the two. Mostly due to performance, but also consistent thermals and the advantage of DDR5 in this rather than DDR4. This is still pricey, I mean, for me it is, but in a tiny little PC, for what you're getting, it's honestly really good. Fair, you could build yourself a PC with parts for less and get more performance out of it, but this is just order it, receive it, pull it out of the box, plug and play, and that's it. So ultimately, it's up to you what you would rather do, as it is almost $1,400 Australian for this, and it could possibly be cheaper with any coupon code don't forget, you can go with the previous generation Ryzen PC for less than the asking price of the AX8 Pro and almost get the same performance. Some positives though, the build quality on this is great, being mostly aluminium and just some plastic on the top and bottom, but it's fairly sturdy for what it is. Upgrading the RAM and SSD is super easy to do with just these four screws to take out, that's it. The CPU stays cool under 100% load, which is great to see, and it never passed 92 degrees Celsius. Once again, great performance from the Ryzen 9 and Radeon 780M, while also not using a ton of power. So that's definitely awesome. Plenty of ports for most people, but I'll talk about the disadvantages of that soon. And as I said before, plug and play out of the box, just set up Windows and off you go. And the criticisms I have for this, there's no Type-C on the front, so you'd have to use the back for Type-C connectivity. Not a big deal, but it is what it is. No native display port, but you can output through the Type-C on the back if you want to. No upgradability in terms of storage, which is really unfortunate. Having an extra M.2 slot to have another drive for more storage, would have been really good to see, but it's just not here in this one. And speaking of storage, that SD card slot on the motherboard works in Windows, so why Geekom didn't have a cutout for it on the casing so you could just use it is something that I don't understand. If it's there, why not take advantage of it? It would just help if you're moving data from a camera's SD card to a PC. I mean, you could hack away part of the casing so you can have the functionality of the SD card slot, but I think that'll void warranty, so probably not do that. All up, it is a great performing mini PC, and this time around, I'm just a lot happier with Geekom's offering. This is all just my opinion at the end of the day. You don't have to agree with it, but I just prefer AMD over Intel nowadays. I just don't know much about newer hardware, so I'm just really going by what I've seen testing these mini PCs over time, because I don't know the new Intel processors or anything like that. And while doing this video, I found out that there's already new Ryzen processors available. So I'm just not up to date with that sort of stuff. And I know this review probably didn't cover everything you needed to know about this, but I tried to include as much info as I could. I personally like this little PC. It's pricey, but I think with the performance you get out of it, it's worth it. If you can snag a coupon from somewhere and get it a bit cheaper, it would definitely be something to look at. Consider exploring other options like pre-built gaming desktops if you're in the market for a new PC, but ultimately, it's your call depending on what you'll be using the PC for. If you only need to do web browsing and some office work, you definitely do not need a Ryzen 9 for that. So you can opt for something a lot cheaper, but if you want something that has the Ryzen 9 in it, 32 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte SSD and want to do some gaming, use it as a home theater PC, editing and a lot more, then you might want to take a look at this. But there's plenty of other manufacturers out there that have mini PCs. So shop around and see what others are offering for the money and see what's the best deal you can find with the budget you're allocating towards something like this. If you do want to check out the AX8 Pro, there's a link down in the description for you. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. So I won't earn anything if you go ahead and click it. It's just there for your convenience. If you want to jump onto Google, then check it out. You absolutely can. There's no problems with that. And I wasn't paid by Geekom for this review. I know some people will say it's an ad, but I'm just giving my personal opinion on something I was sent out. And I will say I won't ever accept paid reviews. I only accept a sample being sent out to me to express my honest opinions on, and that's what I've done today. A massive thank you to Geekom for sending this PC out to me for a review. I really do appreciate it, and I'm glad this PC offered more than the previous one they sent me. And I really don't know if I'll look at another mini PC because we all know the performance of most of these, and I honestly just feel that I don't do these videos justice in terms of a review because I'm not covering absolutely everything that I usually do, but you folks will have to let me know what you thought of this one down below. And if you're hearing me ramble, that means you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks a bunch for tuning into this one. I appreciate you as always, but if you had to jump along using the timestamps, then that's completely understandable, as this review was just all over the place and definitely not my best, but I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. And also, sorry for the robotic s'mores during most of this review, because I'm reading off a script and it sucks. If I don't have a script, I'd be just mumbling random words to you all at this point in time, which I'm basically doing now, so it doesn't really matter. Before I go, I'll let everyone know that I have two more sample reviews to go before I get back to regular stuff. I just kind of agreed to too much in a small time frame, but I'll try my 
best to get other content and in between. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate you all for tuning in and watching me fiddle around with the device for half an hour. I'm sure if you're listening to me say this and you've enjoyed the video, but feel free to let me know what you thought of this one down below. I'm not too happy with how this turned out, but you folks let me know. As always, please take care, stay safe, be good people. I'll see you all in the next one, which will be phones again, which I'm more comfortable reviewing and I sort of know a bit more what I'm talking about rather than new computer technology, fancy Ryzen, I don't know. I know about older computer hardware, but newer computer hardware, forget it. You take it easy, keep being awesome, and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Ah. Uh.